All right, hello again. Now we will do this um, same problem using quadratic elements. And we will show the L2 errors and we will also do a convergence analysis. But first things first, so we have um, our elements here, mm, four of them, and we will create a quadratic uh, mesh. So create and quadratic elements. So for that, we need to know how many elements we will have. I mean, how many nodes we will have, and that's NP. And uh, the rule here is uh, one plus two times N. So we will have nine of these, and we will create these points here. Uh, and once we have the points, we shall uh, create the coordinates for these and then there is a rule to create the connections so the first uh, three points are uh, reserved for element one and then the next three are element two and element three and element four and now we will visualize this mesh using this following code here just paste this in so this is what we have. So we looping through the elements and we are just plotting uh, the uh, three values in here and then uh, putting a text box so we can view to have four elements uh, according to this mesh. All right, so now we need basis functions. So these are linear, we will copy in the quadratic ones So these are quadratic um, basis functions now. Uh, we can of course verify that they are uh, right, but um, you can take it from me that they are right. You have probably done labs. We have uh, derived these as well. Okay, so now we scroll up here and we see that uh, if we take the derivative of our basis function, we will get a linear function back. You can see here. This one is linear in, in, in C, this one is linear in C, and this one is linear in C. That means that if you take a linear function and multiply it with another linear function, no, I'm here, sorry, uh, linear function multiplied with another linear function, we get a quadratic function back. That means that we cannot uh, integrate this exactly using one point Gauss. We need to go to the second order. So order needs to be increased to two. And then we go on, you can see uh, in our code here, we have already programmed this to be uh, the first and last node. So our uh, H here, the element size, will of course be what? Uh, it will be one half, oh uh, yeah, one half. Um, yes, and um, so that's okay. And then this code here is all also programmed in order to take in, into account how many gas points we have once we run this. And we can just try this, uh, run and see what happens. Matrix dimensions must agree. Let's see here, matrix dimension must agree. And there's a problem because these matrices now are not, uh, there's a two by two and then whatever this here is, is a three by three. So we have not taken into account that our matrices will expand depending on how many um, basis functions we have here. So we need to change that. Mm, what we could do here is, um, yeah, we can change this. Uh, and we can insert a, we can insert a variable here called k naught, which is just the, the length of of the, the basis functions, we can do length phi. If we run this, length, type the correct one, uh, length of phi, I was expecting this to be three. Okay, how about if I throw in something here, like zero for instance. There we go. So this needs to be evaluated, but whatever. 
so I just don't want this to be um, hard coded so I'm just uh, doing the length of this vector here and it uh, needs to be evaluated in order for this to actually pop out some proper number so three how many components do we have one two and three this is what this returns now we can use use this k naught in here so instead of two by two we have a three by three and we have a three by one here and of course if we run this now then everything checks out so this is our stiffness element stiffness matrix it's a three by three uh, our h should be one half which it is and uh, x1 is 2.5 and remember this is the last node now uh, the last element it's 2.5 that checks out if you, if you look at the whole we have 2.5 2.75 and 3 2.5 and 3 and then the midpoint is of course 2.75 that checks out as well all right how about our boundary conditions well they are the same and then the prescribed node is still one. Our um, u is three. And if you go down to g, you see here, okay, you can already see that this is right, but you can see here that uh, nothing here has changed in any way. We have the same thing, but it is, um, we need to plot this in a better way. Uh, this, this, these are actually quadratic now. And we're plotting the u we should actually be plotting it like this um, because this is a quadratic element this is a quadratic element they are not linearly connected they are actually curved so in order to plot this uh, better we need to um, change things up here so what we will do is actually for IEL is equal to 1 to n we will uh, plot this element by element and I will create C here. C is going to be lin space uh, 0 to 1, and then we'll have, let's say, we'll have five values. Or, or, or um, yeah, five values is enough, and then we will increase this later. So I need C. And for every C, I will run the phi here phi is of c and let's see if this works it might be an error there is no error perfect um yeah this actually needs to be transposed and then yes i get a matrix back perfect now so what, what i have here now and for the first element is phi uh of uh, xi uh, zero so that's zero here. So I get this back. And then for C 2.5, 0 0.25, I get this. And then so on and so on and so on. So if I multiply this thing here now with uh, with my U for this element, right? I have three values of U here. I will get back uh, five values of U. And then I can plot these. And then if I increase, Oh, let me see. Let, let, let me let me show you what I mean. Uh, first things first. I need u, so call w. U u here is equal to what? Well, I need I need my i node first. So I will do i node is equal to nodes, and then i l like so, and then u is u of i node. So if I run this, I get all of my u values in here. Now, if I multiply this by u, I will get values for um, for this uh, u value here. And I can call this capital U and get rid of u u here. So for for the first element, now what I have done is I have interpolated. Uh, uh, u these three values in five points so if i plot this now so i can do um i can get rid of this actually i can copy this in here and i don't want it to be blue i want it to just be um, maybe stars 
and I will plot the capital U now. Like so. So if I plot this, uh, right, I need x as well, and x is going to be uh, the same way interpolated. So just capital X is phi of C multiplying my local coordinates, which of course are x, c. Um, x, c is equal to x naught, i naught. So x, c in there, let's see. Uh, x is this, perfect. And then x here, and bam. So what I'm, what we're looking at here is now this is the first actually bring this back so, so so we have three values here for the first element and then we have five stars so these five stars are connected with lines and this is a curved element so if we increase this number here to 10 i will get 10 stars for every element and if i get rid of the stars like so, I will get something that looks really nice and smooth. So this is my my line back, and now I can, of course, do this in blue color, and I can actually go up and change the thickness of the exact solution, so I can show it a little bit thicker. Where is it? Where is the true solution? Here it is. Uh, you can do line width, line width. You can do three here, perhaps. So now it's thick, and now my solution is this blue line inside of the red one. And I can show you the the L two error, which is the same, uh, the same thing, exactly like this. Nothing has changed. Uh, and it's, uh, it's it's quite lower now than the uh, than the linear uh, linear component of this. So in fact, this is for uh, for the linear. Uh, I can see here. This is L for for the linear, and this is for the quadratic. So this is the first. For four elements, this is already quite lower than for the linear one. And then, of course, we can do the convergence analysis here as well. If we increase this, um, so yeah, that's how that's how we can plot quadratic fun functions and. Um, Uh, the L2 error doesn't change. Uh, it's quite better, the approximation, than the corresponding linear one for um, four elements. And we can do a convergence analysis now to see if our order is the same, if it's two or if it's higher. So I will, in fact, do it here. So I will just copy H because it's going to be the same. And for L, we shall see what it is. I uh, can actually put this underneath each other. Like so. Okay, so L to error is this. Copy, L to error. paste so already have additional two zeros in there okay go up and change n to 8 and run f5 and copy I'm just copying in here you don't see that but I'm copying in so this is e to the power of uh, minus 14 
for eight linear elements. This is the solution. So eight quadratic elements has an error of three times e to the power of 14. 16 will get us an error of, now oh, it's actually going up. This is quite interesting. e to the power of minus 13. Oh. I have not done this before, so I don't know what to expect. Power of 13, uh, but the solution looks still good. So there might be numerical uh, issues here because this is practically zero, practically zero. Uh, all right, uh, let's increase this to 32. Bam. And also minus 13. So yeah, I don't think we will get something useful out of the last points here. Uh, but what we can get is of course look at this so so the last point see we get numerical issues because these are really low values now uh but what, what we can see here is a hint of course that all right the rate of convergence is 34. so that's super that's super convergence uh why is this Hmm. Well, there is a hint in the solution. I mean, we have a quadratic solution, right? And let's see here. This is practically zero. I mean, we are on top of the line. Why are we on top of the line? We are on top of the line because it is... Oh, where is it? Where do I plot this stuff? F plot here. UE. UE is quadratic. So even if I do this with one element, I will get. <clears throat> I will get. Uh, I will get the exact solution. So this is one element. F five to run all of it. And where's my L2 error? There's my L2 error. So for one uh, for one element, my L2 error is. Why is it not zero? Because I'm not integrating uh, correctly. I'm um, I'm integrating using uh, numerical methods here. So this is, that's why it, this is not exactly zero, but this is it is zero because what I'm getting back here is the um, exact function that I that is the exact solution because the solution is quadratic so that's how you do uh, convergence analysis now you know that and uh, what we can do with this is now modifying um, this stuff and play around with this so that's what we're going to do next